Hey, before we start the show, I just wanted to quickly uh, give a quick talk to the people over at Warner Brothers about the DC movies. Uh, Warner Brothers, you gotta understand, when it comes to Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, things like this, this is my childhood you guys are messing with. Uh, now, I, I don't say this to be mean, I'm not, say, I'm not trying to be a hater, but you guys are ruining my stuff. This is, this is my childhood dreams, man, playing Batman, playing Superman, playing Green Lantern, and you guys are messing it up. So here's what I need you to do, for all the, for all the kids out there, for all the DC fans, I need you to get focused, I need you to get solid, okay? I need you to quit firing directors, Flash, three of them. I need you to quit pissing off Ben Affleck, quit being the director of Batman. Uh, I need you to, to focus on Green Lantern, because uh, you made that terrible Ryan Reynolds version. I, I need you to treat this stuff like it matters, okay? And I know you've heard this a million times, but look at Marvel! They're doing so good! So good! Why can't you be more like Marvel? I realize I'm treating you like Marvel's like your older brother that's better than you, but... Damn it, he's kind of your older brother that's better than you. So be like Marvel, quit screwing around, and start making these superhero movies that are great so that you can make more superhero movies that are great. Hello, you beautiful people. Welcome to Big Ben's Movie Show. I'm your host, Big Ben. With me this week, once again, Juan Uriarte. Juan, how you doing? Doing a lot of finger guns right now. It's finger a, guns. It's an important thing for me right now. So this is, uh, this is Juan's first time on the show this year. No, this is this my year. second time. In 2017. Yes. Really? Who did Arrival with you? Who did Assassin's Creed with you? We're going to get a calendar and sort this out. We're going to figure out. this out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start right off with, uh, with our headlines. This is the biggest entertainment news for the week. Um, not a ton going on that wasn't Super Bowl related. That was pretty much everything that everybody wanted to talk about. Um, over 114 million people watched the game, and uh, it got a 70 share, which means that it was on. For all the TVs that were on, 70% of them were watching the Super Bowl. Kind of an amazing thing. That's pretty cool. Although, I gotta ask, you 30% of the people, what the hell were you watching? There was nothing better on. Come back to the Super Bowl. Unless you were watching the Kitten Bowl. I did watch about five minutes of that later on in the day. That was adorable as hell. So if you're watching the Kitten Bowl, you get a pass. Uh, in terms of the uh, the entertainment news, the big the big thing was the commercials. Out of the, out of the Super Bowl, we had a lot of great commercials that happened. USA Today did a poll, and the number one commercial, according to their readers, was Melissa McCarthy's Kia ad. Who's so dumb? It was just like, hey, I'm an environmentalist because my car says something eco-friendly, and yeah. I gotta go do this, and she just eats crap every time, and she just and gets more and more beat up. And then the last, in the very end, they they say one more thing, and she goes like. Really? Oh man, it's just so boring. I don't get it. It's just it's just a fat lady getting thrown around. What's so and funny see, about that? The her getting hurt thing was the part that I actually thought was somewhat enjoyable no, about that. It was like weak. I it's don't know. Like like they could have they could have clipped it right at the end. Like the whale drops on her boat, cut. No, no, they wa they show her being flung through the air, hitting the boat, falling in the air. They showed all of it, mm -hmm. and that I think was the part of it that actually elevated it past a regular commercial. I mean, people liked it. Who cares? I mean, they're allowed to be wrong. It's fine. I mean, what, what do you think your favorite commercial was? Uh, you know what? Honestly, this year's Super Bowl commercials were all, like, in my opinion, pretty weak. Like, none of them were, like, like memorable or anything. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's some pretty good political ones, I guess, out there. Yeah. Like, the Budweiser was pretty good. Budweiser was good, uh, even, yeah. even Even as Latino, the one where it's, like, the two... Lumber 84. Yeah, that one, I mean, it felt really dragged out, and it felt really on the nose. I get what they're trying to do. Well, uh, and it didn't really... Say, say much, right? But but yeah. you, but like but like you that knew, was my dad's criticism. But you that. knew like, they were trying to say that? something. They're like they're, they're trying, trying to, to say, say something, something, but we don't know what. It's um, something about immigrants, and yeah. it's something about and it's a lumber company. Yeah, hopefully, Wait, are we hiring the immigrants <laughs> to make lumber? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's hope. Stuff. Hopefully, America's just smart enough to catch on. That they just kind of put stuff, and then they wanted people. And then they want you to it. go find it online yeah. afterwards, which I hate those. Um, there was a there was like the Bush commercial was pretty funny. Yeah, where the Bush that was pretty good. My favorite Super Bowl commercial was the Mr. Clean commercial. Uh, because the guy at the end of it who gets jumped by his wife looks pretty much like me. Uh, that was pretty, and that, that's actually, that whole thing was very accurate. Like, when I clean the house, it's like catnip for my wife. So, yeah, that was, that was all pretty cool. Um, all right, moving right along, the other big news for this weekend, uh, Split. The movie Split. I haven't seen it. Uh, Juan has, other people have had. But here's the deal. It's been the number one movie in the country for three weeks. 
Now, that's not saying a ton because there's not a lot of other great movies out there, but three weeks being on top, nothing to shake a stick at. It's made over $100 million and it only had a budget of $9 million. You saw it. Yeah. What, did you, so you liked it. I really liked it, actually. And I, and I don't like um, M. Night Shyamalan. Like, I like this old stuff. And then it just got so predictable with, here's yeah. the twist. And, and they just got, re- he started really, you know, shit in the bed. And then he came out with After Earth, which was a real kick in the crotch. Mm. And I was like, I was really doubtful about this movie. And then I decided to watch it because of, what's the guy's name? Uh, James McAvoy. Yeah, I, was like, I like him as an actor. So I was like, yeah. I'll check it out. It seemed interesting. And honestly, he, he carried it. Like, like his performance really carried it. And there was a twist, but it was at the very end. So I didn't feel like... And we're going to be talking yeah. about that twist a little bit later on in the show. Because uh, it actually has bigger ramifications outside of the movie. And possibly might be creating a whole new movie universe. But we'll talk yeah. about that later on. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, but it's, it's a, this great little success story of Shyamalan kind of coming back. Because mm-hmm. I mean, he's had four or five stinkers in a row at this point. Yeah. Between The Village, um, The Lady by the Water... Uh, the Airbender movie. Oh gosh, that was the worst. Yeah. And, Look, and, but the thing the about there's movie. always going to be people like M. Night Shyamalan, like, directors like him, because he's cheap, he's willing to do it, and uh, you know people need to like if they're spending so much money on special effects, they need a cheap director. Who are you going to hire? And he does do a good job of creating suspense without using special. Effects. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I so. mean, like I said, you should check it out. I really liked I'm, it. I'm going, but to, it's yeah. not like universally panned as amazing. There's a few people I've talked to, like Skyler doesn't like it very much. Yep. He said he fell asleep. I've actually talked to a few people I hang out with, re- you know, recently, and they were. They were like, it's okay. And it's not like an amazing movie. I just really enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's the end of headlines. Like I said, there wasn't a huge ton of stuff going on this week. Mostly just Super Bowl fatigue. Um, I did watch a movie, though, this week that we haven't reviewed on the show yet. And it uh, came out, I believe, towards the tail end of December in a limited release. It was called Edge of 17. Uh, just It recently went wide. And then with all the DVD screeners that came out with the Oscars, I got to take a peek of it. And that will be my, th- my 60 second review for this week. So here we go, Edge of Seventeen. Here we go. All right, Edge of Seventeen is about a young girl uh, living in a town, uh, kind of growing up without a father and what that does to her life. It's really about her and her whole family and how she deals with the rigors of being a 17-year-old girl. Uh, It also stars Woody Harrelson as her teacher and also her kind of mentor type person, um, as well as uh, Kevin Bacon's wife, who I'm blanking on her name now. Uh, But she's great in it. And uh, the, the cast is really good. It's a really funny movie. It takes you by surprise how funny it is. Uh, but there's a lot of great jokes about, about growing up, about the embarrassment of being a teen, uh, and the embarrassment of the things that we say and do. Um, overall, though, loved the movie. Very heartwarming. Very enjoyable. You, just, you feel good watching it, and you feel good at the end of it. So uh, if you get a chance, definitely Edge of 17. Check it out. Great movie. So I'm early. I have another 10 seconds yeah, to Yeah, man, go. that was really that bad. Was quick. That was quick. No, you no, sixty seconds on the dot. Do it again. No, no, it's, it's fine. It's even fine. still, I've got four, or three. I've still got seconds. So, but that was Edge of Seventeen. So check that out. Uh, next week we're going to be talking, hopefully, about Arrival with uh, with our Hollywood correspondent Nick Schreiner. Uh, Nick Nick had other jobs this week, so the, we didn't get him. But we miss you, Nick. Talk to you next week. So, uh, okay. Next thing that I want to talk about, we we mentioned already at the top of the thing, the Super Bowl, uh, and the big thing that happened with the Super Bowl, aside from the regular commercials is movie trailers. We got to see very shortened and condensed versions of a couple different movie trailers. Uh, I believe there was about 10 total uh, over the course of the Super Bowl and the pregame show, but only a few of them actually had a huge impact. Um, this study came out last, last uh, well, earlier this week about which one of the trailers had the biggest impact in terms of social media and marketing and, and is now getting reaping the most rewards. Uh, number, well actually, let me go ahead and, and we'll start with the top one. We'll start, st- let you know the one that was the most successful and you and I both are, um, are kind of surprised at this one. Yeah. Fate of the Furious, the new Fast and Furious 8 movie. Uh, they had a 42 million person increase in social media mentions, uh, tweets, Facebook posts, sounds, things like that. It sounds like a joke. It sounds like they, they needed a title for the theme and the working title was Fate of the Furious. And they just forgot to erase it off the, the can. Yeah. Gosh, it's just so bad. I mean, these are no longer racing movies. These are superhero movies with cars. Exactly. And... I don't like them. I personally don't like them. The last one I saw was the, which was supposed to be the last one, and then they the said, fourth one, and yeah. they said, "Hey, these are still making money. Let's make more." And oh, so they're making even more money. Yeah. I just it, like some, that was before they'd added the Rock to the franchise. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Rock revitalizes anything. Yeah. Um, what I thought was great though was the trailer for when I first saw this. It was, uh, it was just like, you know, Toretto was like, "No one can take out my family except for me. I'm, d- 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 I'm a bad guy now." I'm just like, "Oh my, <laughs> you no, you're the bad guy. This is great." And then they're like. Oh my God, Dom's a bad guy. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? But guess what? At the very end, you know what's gonna happen? 
he's gonna be double cross the bad guys because he was. It's all about family the whole time. All about, about family, family and it's Corona. All family. It's all about family. family and corona. Uh, this one adds uh, brings back Jason Statham from the last movie, whereas before he was a villain, now he's joining the team and he's gonna help him fight Dom, who's their friend. Oh no! And it also adds, and I'm almost amazed at how they got her, Charlize Theron. Is that her? That's her. Ugh. She's the bad guy in this one. She's she, the one who somehow turns Dom. I feel so bad. She's to plant a nasty kiss on Vin Diesel's like, face. She's an amazing actress. She doesn't need. She doesn't need to do crap like this. Maybe she owed someone a favor or something. Uh, somebody, yeah, yeah, like like yeah. Th- somebody's got pictures of her doing something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so now she's got to do Fast and the Furious Eight. Just like like hear that like say that out loud if you're an actor go like no, it's, I'm starring in Fast and the Furious Eight yeah it's like, uh, like it just makes you sad you know, it's embarrassing to say what do you want what are you in the Fate of the Furious it's not called Fast and Furious Eight it's called the Fate of the Furious it's Fast and Furious but 8. it's like every normal person like you mean Fast and Furious Eight yeah. Like, yeah I want you to go to the movies and be like I'd like one ticket for the Fate of the Furious like unless you're talking about Star Wars or maybe James Bond what other franchise can hold up eight different movies mm. and have them still be anything of quality. These shouldn't. I mean, they, they make money because people are stupid and they want to see stuff blow up. So, yeah. Exactly. Let's keep going. Exactly. Uh, all right. Next one on the list is one that we actually both are really excited for. Mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 uh, had a uh, Super Bowl trailer. That increased uh, kind of mentions and talks online by 34 million people. Again, that's a huge number. Nothing to shake a stick at. I'm almost surprised that there were 34 million people that hadn't already gotten excited about this yeah, movie. Yeah, Baby Groot's adorable. Baby Groot's amazing. Yeah. I would watch a whole Baby Groot movie. I would too. I just, it's so funny. I mean, even, he, hey, that's Vin Diesel in a good role. But he, even though, like, all I can say is, I am Groot. Like, him, he's having his argument with, with Rocket oh. about the bomb. I was like, yeah. this is so awesome. I would, to- yeah, I would totally watch two hours of them just hanging out. Yeah, I like, mean, I want to watch Baby Groot take like customer service phone calls. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, you, know what's, you know what's scary though? Baby Groot's a murderer because he legit yells, you know, you know, when, and then he grabs that guy, that Ravager, and yeah. then smashes him and throws him off a ledge. Oh yeah, he's killed a bunch. He's of a people. monster. I can't wait yeah. for that movie. It's gonna be so good. He's killed uh, even before he was Baby Groot when he was regular size Groot. He killed people all over the place. Oh, and it's got an amazing soundtrack. It's yeah, gonna, you know, the first one had a great soundtrack. The second one's gonna have a great soundtrack. I can't wait. I heard a report that this one actually like like goes even further with how great the soundtrack is and that they lean on it more. And I'm like. I don't even know if that's possible. You yeah. guys really... It's definitely going to win number one again. Yeah. it's. Uh, I'm really excited for this movie. This this is uh, the one that like I'm now circling May with a big red marker on my calendar because, holy crap, that's... And the fact that we get three Marvel movies this year, I'm so happy. So, all right. Next one on the list. Uh, this is another one that's a little, little more schlocky. Uh, Transformers. Boo! Transformers number Boo! five. Transformers number Boo! five. Got uh, 28 million... Uh, new new likes on social media because of that. Um, I I'll be honest. I haven't seen any of them past two. Yeah. And I saw two as a favor. I saw the third one as a favor. Ugh. The first one was good. First one's good. It was really good. Shia LaBeouf was killing it. Yeah. And then they just decide, hey, let's just make the same movie again. And then they said, hey, let's just make the same movie again. We can't afford a good place. We're gonna do it in Chicago. Yeah. Gosh, that was so bad. And then they couldn't get now Shia LaBeouf. Got, now they got and they got Marky Mark. Mark. Ugh. Yeah. No, that's uh, well. And in this one, they got Anthony friggin' Hopkins. Oh, man, he must out. Someone has some dirty pictures of Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, either that or all that sounds of the Lambs money has gone, and he needs some more cash. So you haven't seen any of the new the newer ones? I haven't seen any of the newer. The ones. only bit I really know about the newer ones was the one with T.J. Miller. That was the first. Was it T.J. Miller? It was the, in the fourth when, one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's the one with the with the first one with Marky Mark. So Marky Mark's daughter's like underage, but they're in Texas, and she has a boyfriend who's older than what the age of consent is. And uh, Marky Mark's not too happy about this. Of course. And the guy, which is the weirdest thing ever, carries around a piece of paper. That's like a piece of almost like a, oh, a printout. Oh, heard the, about this. Yeah, printout of legal documents saying like, no, 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 it's legal. I can technically have sex with your daughter, which is why would uh, you? Why would you do that, Michael Bay? I just why I don't. Why would care. anybody write that into a script? These are garbage movies. I mean, they, they just, like unless you're planning on killing him at some point in the yeah. movie as a cathartic thing for everybody yeah. in the audience. Ugh. I mean, they, they, you see, want to see stuff blow up? Go watch this movie. If you don't, I mean, if you want to save yourself a headache, don't go. It. I mean, I don't know. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, gross. Um, coming in right behind that one uh, with 27 million uh, new social media mentions and also equally schlocky, Pirates of the Caribbean, also five. Uh, <laughs> interesting, they're both on the, the fifth version. Who, who knew that, so. that, that, that that ride could become a you know huge franchise? Five movie franchise. Yeah. Man. Ugh. Are you going to watch this? I am. Yeah, yeah, you would. Here's, here's the thing. <laughs> I actually, I really enjoy all the Pirates movies, even four. Uh, which was easily not the best one. I couldn't. I um, couldn't watch was, the fourth one. I watched the third one and I got seasick. 
And oh, I was just yeah. like, no, nah, I can't do this anymore. But they're bringing back uh, the original. Orlando yeah, Bloom. Yeah, he, he looked really gross with the scales on his neck. Yeah. Um, something about, I can't say nice about, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, they do a great job with special, special effects. Yes, they do. Like, whoever's playing, I think, is it Salazar or whatever? Or yeah. Is, whoever's doing well, that guy, or whatever the, the bad guy's name is. Yeah. He, like, he, the, the nasty, you know, zombie thing has looked yeah. so much better than the first one when they were undead, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that looks great. I just don't know. I mean, it, they really, you know, they got this, um, was it uh, Johnny Depp for cheap because he's broke now? Yes. And he's in a lot of trouble because he beat his ex-wife or whatever? Yes. So, good for that. He I mean, spends $2 million there, are, there are people who love this movie. Like, yeah. these, this, So, good for them. But, I mean, I'm not going to watch it. Unless my girlfriend makes me watch it, then I'll watch it. No, I actually, um, my wife has planned an entire weekend uh, around we're Aww. going to be... We're Aren't you be glad you're married? Up, yeah. We're going to be catching up on the first four. Uh, and then, as a group, me and my friends are all going to go see the fifth one together. Possibly. Some people might bail. I don't know. <laughs> so... Um, and I actually, I, today I asked her if she wanted to try that with Transformers. No. Because we would all be making fun of them more, and she immediately said no. Are you, you're going <laughs> to so, watch Transformers? No, you're not watching I might that. try it. Oh. I might, I'm going to go watch all four of the other ones, and then go see the newest one. Why would you put yourself through torture? You might as well just watch The Human Centipede. I, I saw Fuller House seasons one and two. Why? There's it's, a second season? Yeah. Oh, no. It's one of the most popular things ever on Netflix. Wait for the new season of Young Justice. That's going to be That's going to be amazing. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, all right, and the last one on the list, and the one that I'm the least excited about. I can't wait for this movie. Life, uh, starring Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal, about uh, these two guys are in space, or it's a whole team of people in space. They find life on another planet, and then the life turns bad and tries to kill them. It's Jake Gyllenhaal. I love Jakey Gyllenhaal. He's my favorite. He's my favorite. I, I, I don't care. He's I, adorable. It's, it's this is to me this is a situation of like really great talent and that really great actors being in a movie. That is kind of dumb that I've already seen a couple times before. Well, then don't so, go. Yeah. Well, then no, don't I'm go. Well, then don't watch it. I'm not going to. Then don't watch it. I don't know why I wasn't going to. Don't watch it then. I'm not, yeah. I'm not. Whatever. Don't Whatever. watch it. Whatever. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Honorable mention. This one didn't uh, this didn't rank on the list, but for me, this, this is the one that was the most impactful for me because I went from not being interested to now wanting to see this. Ghost in the Shell. Uh, Ghost in the Shell did a trailer yesterday that was visually breathtaking. Reminded me a lot. Uh, of actually Blade Runner. Uh, that's that's what it felt like to me as yep. I was looking at it. You you mentioned though that uh, it had something to do with a lot of people thought it was Matrix like. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, the guy I was watching with, the Super Bowl with, uh, yeah. when they popped up, there were some scenes that reminded me of the Matrix, and he goes like, "Oh, they're making a new Matrix," and I was like, "Well, actually, you know, the Wachowski brothers at the time, because now they're the sisters, yeah. were actually inspired by uh, Ghost in the Shell a lot. So that scene where you know Neo's behind the pillars and he's getting shot down yeah. is almost taken exactly from Ghost in the Shell. Oh wow! So that scene is actually in the trailer if you look back at it. So yeah, um, yeah, I was always going to watch Ghost in the Shell uh, for it's, my podcast. I didn't, I didn't get Matrix out of it. To me, there was so much more color. Yeah, well, um, you know, I mean, Mat- Matrix, it's everything's black and green. <laughs> yeah, so. that's kind of the point. Trench coats. Hey, hey, I Skylar, mean, cut to me real quick. The reason the reason Ben wants to watch this is because Scarlett Johansson's wearing like a skin suit and she's like pretty much naked and he's a pervert. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That's that's definitely <laughs> part of it. That's definitely yeah. That's all right. Yeah, you caught me. He's a he's a dirty old man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna watch it. I can't. I'd wait for say it. middle-aged man. I wouldn't say old man. Old man. Yeah, no, dirty old man. Uh, yeah, Scarlett Johansson in a skin tight bodysuit. That's something to tune in for. <laughs> yeah, <That's>, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got my attention. Um, I definitely like. I'm sitting in the room with my parents and I definitely said out loud. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> wowza, yeah. <laughs> like, like old school, like Joey Lawrence, whoa. It was, it was uh, pretty, pretty embarrassing. So, yeah. Anyway, all right, uh, time now for Suck Not Suck. Uh, Juan's already done the show, so I don't have to explain the rules to him, but for you folks at home, I'm going to give Juan a little bit of movie news, and he's going to tell me whether or not that movie will suck or not suck. Pretty simple. So uh, here we go. Number one, The Impossible War. A uh, movie that's going to be made now is going to be all about the creation and the implementation of the polio vaccine. Does that sound like that's going to be a good movie to you? Mm. Yeah, suck. Yeah. I don't, you see, I don't care. I don't mean, is, is polio, uh, see, is polio uh, bad? Polio's bad, man. What is it? What's it do to you? Do you it do you cripples know? you. No, polio cripples you. Like, you, you first you can't but walk. But people don't have it anymore. And then it crawls up your spinal system. But people and then don't get polio die. anymore. Because we invented the vaccine. But people, but it's not like a, it's not like a thing anymore. Uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's not a thing anymore. It's not a thing anymore. Thanks to Jonas Salk, the guy in the movie that we're going to watch. We're going to watch? We're going to watch I'm, this together? I'm going to watch this. I don't, you see, I'm not interested enough to watch this. It's, it sounds like, you said it's a biopic, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of other stuff I can watch. That's true. I can watch Scarlett Johansson in a bodysuit. <laughs> this is true. 
Um, I don't think Jonas Salk is going to wear a bodysuit in the movie. I mean, he might. We don't so, know yet. Yeah, maybe he does. That maybe, might be part of history. Maybe he's like, I'm curing polio and shaking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a whole different part of the movie. It's, oh, it's man. like, I can walk, I can walk. Now, yes, you can. Now, shake that ass. And, like, that's going to be the whole, the reason for polio was to shake that ass. It's just like a, so, it's like a really involved, like, SNL skate. Like, guess what? It was a joke the whole time. The whole time. It, it was, was all bit. about just shaking the ass. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, I still won't watch it, no. They'll give it to FDR. He'll jump out of the chair. <laughs> Yeah. Shake his leg. Suck. Sorry, I say yeah. suck. I'm I'm gonna say not suck. I think that this sounds that's an interesting sounding movie. So uh, number two, World War Z was supposed to come out. There was a sequel that was supposed to come out this year. This is from I think back in like 08 was yeah, the original one. one. Um, visually compelling movie about zombies taking over the entire earth. Uh, and we've been waiting for a sequel this whole time. I actually didn't know they were making one mm-hmm. until I saw it on the schedule for this year. It's since been pulled and they don't have a new release date out there. Okay, so the news is World War Z 2 is shelved. They're not going to do it. Yeah. That that does not suck. Yeah, because I didn't like World War Z. I didn't think it was that great. I didn't think it was that good either. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt looked, they kept going to the wide because he was getting pretty old. Yeah. Too many close shots. Oh, uh, the, it's the, gotten even worse the since ending, then. The ending so. was like, it felt like, you know, like the ending to, you know, Planet, was it? War of the Worlds. It's just like, oh, the zombies don't like people who got AIDS. Let's give each other AIDS or whatever, you know? Just like, and, oh, that's yeah, right, yeah, you know, so it's like they, they announced it back when the movie came out that they were going to do a sequel Yeah. because it's Brad Pitt and he's got name value. Well, and it did make but, quite a bit of money. Yeah, but I mean, you could tell that the movie wasn't, it wasn't good. And it's yeah. based off a book. Well, plus they did tons of reshoots yeah. and alternate endings. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was not, I mean, the, yeah. it was based off a book. The person I talked to um, said there's nothing about the book. As a, in the book, the guy is actually like a reporter going around the world recording, uh, documenting all these things that are happening during the zombie epidemic. And then in the book, it's just like, let's make him a family. I mean, the movie is, let's make him a family man who's out there to save him. The he works for who? Yeah, the World Health he's Organization. Like a, yeah, yeah. But, he's, but, he's a, but he's a bad boy of the World Health yeah. Organization. Yeah, I mean, there were some cool scenes. I like the scene where the, uh, the snipers were shooting outside of the airplane. Yeah. That was pretty dope. Well, in the scene when they're trying to escape from Israel and there's a wall that was of pretty zombies dope too. that like, make a ladder of themselves and climb yeah. up to the... But it wasn't, was I don't awesome. think it's cool enough or warranted enough for a sequel, so I don't really care if they're not I mean, making and this. The other weird thing is the reason for the whole schedule pulling, they haven't hired a director even though there's a director who says he wants to do it and Brad Pitt signed on, and even though that director is David Fincher, who's amazing, mm. uh, and has worked with Brad Pitt on Seven and on Fight Club. and I mean, uh, and, yeah. it's been so long. I don't think people are clamoring for this movie anymore. I think it's like, no. hey, it's kind of... At the same time, I'm clamoring for anything that has Brad Pitt and David Fincher involved. Okay, well... So, like, they, like, they, they could be like, the phone book presented by David... And I'd be like... I think I'm going to give it a watch. Okay, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a test. I'm not too excited, but we'll see what they do with it. So what about you? So. Suck, not suck? What do you think? I'm going to say I'm gonna say suck. I, I think this is, it's, it sucks that, uh, well, I think more than anything, this is a bad sign for this movie. Okay. It's a sign, to me, this is a sign this movie is not going to be good whenever it does get made. So wouldn't that, okay, so the news is bad news for the, so you, don't you say not suck? Because you no, it's whether or not that movie is going to suck. Oh, okay. Well, I was talking about the news. No, nah, the movie's going to suck. If it comes yeah, out. that movie's going to suck. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Next one up. This one is pretty interesting. We talked about Split earlier on in the show. Oh, we're going to spoil it, by the way. This we're is a spoiler. Gonna, yeah, we're going to spoil it. So at the end of Split, uh, it's revealed, and you can go ahead and, and kind of say this because I'm I'm only hearing it secondhand. Yeah. But Bruce Willis has a cameo at the end of Split. Yeah, yeah. So so the twist is at the very end, they're at a diner and they're you know they're talking about how uh, James, James McAvoy, right? Mm-hmm. His character has escaped and how he has this personality where he is essentially has the, the strength of like a rhino and a bunch of amalgamations, a bunch of animals, essentially a monster is what they're saying. Yeah. And they call it they call the monster uh, I think uh, the swarm or I think it's some, the horde. They call it the horde. Okay. Um, so they they give him a name or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's people like in the diner and they're all looking at the screen and the girl's just like, this reminds me of the time like, you know, 20 years ago where they named that guy something. Was it Mr. Mr. Wood? Uh, Mr. Mr. B- Balloon? And then out comes Bruce Willis like, it was Mr. Glass. You know, and it's like, oh my God, they're in the same universe. So this movie is in the same universe as Unbreakable. So essentially what it is is, and Mike Shyamalan, I think without knowing, I don't think he planned this, without really knowing, he kind of fell into building this superhero universe. Exactly. That's what I don't happened. think he was planning this initially. No, no, I think no this, way, no way. And knowing how hot universes are right now, that yeah. there's, there's Marvel, there's yeah. DC, there's going to be a universal monster universe. I hate every time I you say that. that. No, I hate every time you say that, because there's gonna be, because 
God, I just don't want it to happen. And I always have to hear it when I'm on your show. There's also going to be a Hasbro Toys universe featuring G.I. Joe. And Barbie, right? The mask team from that and the Micronauts. The Micronauts. They're like this big. Yeah. Anyways, so so go to get to the news part. Okay, so the news part is M. Night Shyamalan says Split 2 is already, he's got a cast already, or he's got a script already, and it is creating a superhero universe. Here's what I'm wondering. Is it just those two movies of his? Yeah. Or, wouldn't this be amazing? And it's a little hard because Bruce Willis is in two of these movies. But what if it's everything? What if Signs, what if all of that was all his movies? Like, well, all of this one collective universe. It's like a there's stretch. There's a Shama universe. It's a stretch. He could, I mean, if he really wanted to, he could make it happen. I'd rather him just stick to these two movies being connected. But, I mean, knowing people, knowing studios, they could get greedy and say, like, hey, why don't you put in all these crappy well, movies there's, together? There's elements of superheroes in Lady in the Water. Yep. Um, there's, uh, not really in Village, uh, but in a couple of them, there's this element of people with extraordinary abilities. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, so I mean, I, so whether I think this is going to suck or not, I'm... I'm going to say not suck because I really did like Split and I would gladly watch a sequel. Now, knowing that the caveat that, you know, the twist was that, you know, the, there's a superhero universe at the very end, I'm, I'm kind of worried because maybe I don't want to see Bruce Willis fight up, fight up with him, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, it has to be a good story. I, you know, I just don't, I don't know. I'm going to watch this if see, it I'm, comes out. I'm down. I'd like to watch Bruce Willis fight James McAvoy. That sounds awesome. Uh, so, okay, number four, uh, Jack Nicholson is going to make a return to acting. He's been retired for about seven years, but he's just signed on to do a remake of a movie that came out this year in Germany called Tony Erdman. It will be Jack Nicholson starring with uh, Kristen Wiig. Um, do you know what, can I ask what genre it is? Um, it's kind of a comedy. It's uh, okay. basically about a father who, uh, to impress his daughter, plays like an advertising executive or whatever and and it's it's kind of a it becomes funny like that cool uh i'm gonna say not suck because my favorite you know jack nicholson was uh I, besides being crazy homicidal was definitely the mob boss from the departed okay that was my favorite him at any point mm -hmm. but he does funny really well too he uh anger management that he did with yeah, adam did, sandler yeah. was he was great in. and you kind of forget um, that it's a you know it's an adam sandler movie because yeah you know, yeah you forget that you forget that because he makes it so good that you're like this can't be an Adam Sandler movie. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah. yeah, it's kind of so, weird. But yeah, I'd, 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 I'd I agree. Watch that. Not suck. I'm really looking forward to him coming back to acting. Uh, last one up, number five. <laughs> this one's a little weird. Fifty Shades Darker, which is uh, released this coming weekend, uh, has released a virtual reality game that you can get on Samsung Gear VR and other things like that, that will put you inside the movie. Do you want to go inside Fifty Shades Darker? Mm. Well, I know you have a Samsung phone, so I already know that. This old guy already got it. Oh, and I don't need to download a movie app that is basically like bondage porn and put that on my phone. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'm going to say suck because it's not for me, but there's some people out there who's going to be really excited about this. I know a good friend of ours, DJ Fitzgerald, uh, good, friend of the, good friend of the show, is uh, a huge fan of Fifty Shades of Grey. And uh, it's the weirdest thing. I don't, I don't know. How, he tries to explain it every time I hang out with him. I just don't get what he's saying. So DJ, this is for you, DJ. Uh, okay, that's the show for this week. Thanks so much for watching. If you have uh, questions about the show, issues with the show, uh, feel free to email us. It is at isbigbms at zoho.com, big BMS. Um, if you like me and want to hear more of what I have to say, I've got a couple podcasts out there. Uh, both are on the Geek Wars podcast network. Just search Geek Wars. You'll find both of them. Uh, one, anything you want to plug? Yeah, I have a podcast also. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about anime. It's called the Instagram Podcast. It's on iTunes and Podbean. Um, go up every week. Uh, we talk about... New things in anime, old things in anime. You do a news section too, because mm -hmm. like there's always stuff happening. Um, yep. So yeah, check it out if you like anime. And if you don't, well, we'll go listen to one of Ben's podcasts. I don't care. I gotta say, I'm not a big anime guy. I've listened to a couple of his podcasts. They're great. They're good stuff. Even oh, if you're not a big anime it. fan, stop it's it. still fun to listen to. Um, all right, that's uh, that's all for this week. Next week, we're actually going to get back to uh, to a full on movie review uh, because a movie is coming out that I finally really want to see, and uh, and it's going to be the return of the the kid movie correspondent Cassie will be back we'll be talking about Lego Batman so see you then good night everybody I'm sorry if I called you old you're not old <laughs> someone called me old at school today really hurt my feelings <laughs>